Hi. It was a busy week, actually. So I've made a lot of changes, internal, external, and no, internal, actually. Um, and also some visual changes as well. So what you can see at first glance is a new window that says timeline and animation. And that's because now we have a timeline. So here is the current frame, here are some elements. As you can see, there are, there are a lot of elements for now. So we can delete them all and start simple. So let's add an explosion emitter. And as you can see, what's more, it is animated. So here you can see that the size changes in time. And that's because we've got an entire animation system. So previously I think there was no animation system to be honest. And yeah, now you have animation curves. So how to use them? Uh, you need to, uh, with left control and scroll bar, you can zoom in and zoom out. With left control and scroll bar and scr scroll wheel, scr oh sorry, scroll wheel pressed, you can move up and down. Here you can change the timeline position and size. So you can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, with double click you can add points. For now you cannot remove points, but this will be added later. And yeah, you can move it however you want. Here you can disable uh, some curves, like in Blender, to actually have more control over it. And yeah, if you change them, you can, ch you can move the entire curve if you want. So yeah, now we have animated emitter. So <clears throat> that's it. So the next thing is, oh, and if you want to have more control over it, you can use, you can actually use for that uh, the object panel. So here you have add keyframe, remove keyframe. So if you go over the Oh, sh shit. I... Oh, no. <laughs> I need to do some cool rounding because I cannot go at the exact point because it is not in the frame. So, yeah. If you are in the frame, you can add a keyframe. You can then edit the keyframe. And if you click left control and click on the window, you can actually write something. And then you can you need to disable editing keyframe. I think I will change that, but I don't know how to do it correctly now. So this will change in the future, but not yet. Mm, what next? What is next is that yeah, you can do the same thing actually for for other for position, etc. Uh, yeah, so that's something interesting. And oh, and you can change the object time. So if you want to, uh, if you want it to happen only on the selected frame, you can like make it emit a bit longer or shorter etc what next uh, you can do some procedural animation actually so here you can also like zoom in zoom out but you can add for example sign function to let's add it this to the size let's decrease step size and now we've got the sign function and also we can like change the speed 
change the size for example change the mid range change the offset etc so now the size will change a little bit uh, we can add also for example the random noise and now it's more random so yeah you can do some amazing things with that I think it will be better next yes this will be definitely better but this is the very early implementation and you can change the curve you want to do that for so for example let's do some movement so yeah I definitely need to add some things later oh and now the emitter actually emits fire it did not do that before so that's another thing uh, with the spacebar now we can pause and play the animation mm. and and was also interesting now we've got particle emitter and we need to specify the path dum 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 it's because I implemented the initial version of reading blender particle cache so if you have exported your blender particles explosion so for example you want to use the chaos add-on or just make your particles explode or emit something then you can if you save that to your hard drive you can actually import it and now we've got the particle explosion so as you can see it looks awesome and you can do some magical things with that so yeah this is actually a preparation for now it's very unintuitive so if you want to add something more yes you can need to write manually and it's pain in the ass because you need to specify the path but if you write something wrong you cannot confirm that and if you write some oh, everything right you can confirm that however it is uh, not unintuitive yes I will need to change that in the future <coughs> the same thing is with the cache folder however with the cache folder is less painful and yes you can you can actually rescale also the particle system and you can set the position so you cannot change the position of individual uh, particles however you can change the position of the whole particle system so this is the new option and yes if you want you can now create some amazing explosions that looks actually like explosions <coughs> so yeah these are the main changes I don't that there are probably some other changes as well however I do not remember what I actually changed so oh and yeah with this button you can add with this button you can delete with you can also like duplicate you can here add something so yes oh yeah and it crashed yes yes it crashed because I've added the particle system when I cannot do that so yeah Ho hopefully it it will be fixed in the future however what is also oh yeah I know what I changed so now if you add the power if you add the force if you add turbulence you cannot see anything and that's great because there was a bug before and 
it actually like the, the whole screen render screen was turned white and uh, and yeah and you could not do anything and now force fields works because there was a problem with in the rend render kernel was the division by zero problem and I fixed that so now it works and you can do whatever you want so yeah mm, I think that's all so please test it add some ideas in on the discord channel or uh, on blender talk dev talk so yeah uh, thank you for watching and hope you like it. Peace.